Hello friends, in this video I have a selection of eight vacuum cleaners to show you. Let's check them out. So I have been uh, in the past month to Cornwall and Bristol um, and I've on, on those trips I've picked up quite a few vacuum cleaners. Uh, I think it's 10 in all, no, 11 in all. Um, the eight I have to show you in this video are the special ones. Uh, the other three I think are in for repair or to be restored. Uh, they aren't particularly interesting. Just, just to cover them off, there was a, a Dyson DC50, a Dyson DC33 and a Mark I Air Ram. Um, so they aren't particularly interesting and I'm not going to bore you to death showing you those. We We've all seen them in the past, but the main eight machines that you will see in this video are pretty cool, um, but I've ordered them from uh, a bit near to, oh my God, I can't believe I've, I've found that. Oh my God, that, that's amazing. Oh my God. So that's like the sequence that we'll go through. Um, so let's just crack on with it. So yeah, here's the first one. And our first machine is this uh, Hoover Pure Power 1300. Now, as I say, I've ordered them from meh to ah! So yeah, this is very much a meh machine. I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do with this. It's not in the best condition, to be honest with you. Everything is very worn. Uh, it's, oh my God, it's, yeah, it's had a, it's had a hard life. <laughs> Haven't we all? Um, so yeah, it's not great. <clears throat> this one may actually end up being stripped for parts. I don't even know if it works. Uh, and the, the back handle's broken off. You, you can see it's leaning really badly. Uh, the hood is all split and cracked here. But I just really like the colour of this particular model. Uh, I, I, I really like yellow and black. I think it makes a really nice combo. Um, and it's not nice. Mm, it's kind of... Meh. Uh, it's a 2001 machine, so yeah, it's not early, it's not particularly interesting, it's it's just a yellow pure power really, so yeah, I don't know yet, uh, the knob's missing as well for the height control, I'm not sure, I'm, I might have one upstairs, I don't know, uh, so this one is kind of borderline whether or not it's going to be kept, so I don't really know, but yeah, this, so this is the real meh one. Um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. But uh, on to the second one. The second machine is this SIBO Automatic X1. Again, it's not really all that interesting. These are great machines, but uh, this one belongs to my friend Richard. And he said to me, do you, do you want this? I was like, yeah, all right then, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. It needs a belt. I'm not sure if it's the primary or secondary belt that's gone, but yeah, I mean, the brush roll is just sat there spinning freely. So something's obviously gone wrong. Um, I think I thought this would make quite a good video to do because we'll take it apart and have a look inside. We'll talk through the electronics and the belt system on it. And then I'll probably refurbish it and sell it. Um, I don't really know. It's not one that I would keep so I think this probably is a, a refurb and sell. Um, it's not it's not too bad, I suppose. We're missing a couple of tools on it. Missing the brush, missing the all-purpose tool. Um, but it does run quite well. The motor sounds sweet. So the cat's say now, go away, I'm filming. Honestly, she's just attention, just demanding. Um, yeah, so this one will get re refurbished and sold on. Um, yeah, SIBO X1. On to number three. Now this is where things start to get slightly more in interesting. So we have here um, a Hoover Pure Power Lifetime 1200. Now my wonderful friend Luke, hi Luke, uh, he picked this up for me um, and now he came down to Bristol when I was there because uh, he was picking up um, a couple of tumble dryers from Richard. So he brought some machines that he'd picked up for me. Um, so we did the transfer and I put this in my car and then he took back his AEG cylinder that I'd fixed for him. 
Um, and yeah, th this one was just on Facebook Marketplace, and I said, oh, I really, really like that, because I've got the later Lifetime, the Lifetime Mark II, which is a dark blue, but this is the early one. This is the first Lifetime. And interestingly, I didn't actually realise it was quite so early as it is. It's actually the um, uh, 50th week of 1997, and I'm pretty sure Pure Power went on sale in 97. So it is surprisingly early, and I just love the colour of these. This mint green is really nice. Obviously, it's it's really quite dirty, and it needs a good service and a clean. The bumper's split there, but we might be able to do something with that. Um, but it is pretty much complete as well, and it's in reasonable shape. It's missing an all-purpose all tool, but they're quite easy to find. Um, it's also unfortunately missing its lifetime bag. It's uh, It's got a paper bag in there currently, but that's probably not a bad thing if I'm totally honest with you. Those lifetime bags were pretty rubbish. The seals used to break on them uh, where they attached to the machine and they, they just used to let the dust leak out through. It's not it's not great. It's quite surprising that this one is still here with us. Um, most of them have died off because that lifetime bag was so bad it just strangled the airflow. The motor overheated and then burnt out. So yeah, this one's really nice to have. I'm really, really happy with this. Uh, really glad to have it. Uh, now, just to say, there will most likely be individual videos of most of these cleaners. This is just the overview video, just, just to show you what I've picked up over the past uh, over the past couple of weeks or so. So yeah, that's the Hoover Lifetime. Really happy with this, really happy. Um, and now we're on to number four. The fourth machine in our show and tell is this rather sorry looking Nilfisk GS80. Now this is Richard's cleaner, which he bought, um, and he said that uh, the pictures that they put on Facebook, I think it was a Facebook marketplace purchase, the pictures that the seller had put on um, were not brilliant, they were a bit dark, a bit blurry, um, and he couldn't see what kind of condition this machine was in prior to trekking all the way into Bristol to go and buy it. Um, he said the primary reason he bought it was for the floor tool. Now, I do recall that we tried to repair his original floor tool and he'd taken it apart and uh, that floor tool is an absolute nightmare. Uh, the way it functions is really, really weird where the, the brushes go up and down. It's kind of like an Electrolux one, uh, like you would get with the 65, say, but it's got a pedal release on top and the mechanism is quite complex. I tried to fix it and put it back, you know, back together um, but it never really worked properly and I think that's probably because I, I, I didn't take it apart so I didn't see how it, how it was meant to go um, so yeah he just said I'll oh, live and then went and bought this one basically for its floor tool it is in a bit of a state it's had a hard life this one uh, all the chrome is flaking off on the on the clips and everything the uh, aluminium is really yeah it's not great at all um, there's rust on the trolley as well. <laughs> I know that feeling. And um, yeah, it's just, it's not great. I'm just going to look inside actually. I haven't actually opened it up. Oh uh, no, it's been used without dust bags as well. So, oh God. That's, this, this one um, is going to be quite a tricky restoration. I don't really know what to do, to be honest. Um, and the, uh, the plastic's broken around the plug as well there. And it's got this awful flex with it, this really thick, white, it's quite cheap flex uh, that always bends and kinks and it's, oh, it's rubbish. So this is gonna be quite a big job to do. What I'm thinking is I'd polish the metal work up, maybe sp spray the trolley, um, give it a service and maybe try and sell it. Interestingly, this particular machine has uh, the green rubber hose. Um, so that's like all three versions of the hoses covered now, because um, Richard's got one of these that's got the plastic crush proof hose. I've got one with the woven hose, and now there's this one with the green rubber hose. And I think, if I'm right, and I just 
I'm really asking you guys now to tell me if I'm right. The green rubber hose is the early one. So this is probably an early GS80 from the mid 70s, I think. Then they went on to the woven hose, which is the one I've got. And then the later machines had the crush proof hose. Um, if you guys can tell me if I'm right or not on that, please do, because I would really, really like to know. So yeah, that's number five, I think. Is it number four or five? Oh, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> I've lost count now. Um, yeah, so this one will be restored, but it's probably going to be a while until it's done. I'm just gonna put this in the garage with its hose and just have a think about what to do with it and how to approach it, really. Um, yeah, so anyway, on to the next one. Machine number five, this incredibly cute and compact Samsung. Um, this is so cool, I love it, look at it. It's so tiny, it's an SC7061, uh, 1400 watts. Um, I, I, I don't really know much about this cleaner. Again, it's one of Richard's that he said, do you want this? I was like, yeah, oh God, yeah, this is, this is awesome. Um, it's a bagless machine. And it's got the um, the cyclone unit that sits on the rods. So the cyclone is not inside the cleaner. It's actually on the rods. So the airflow goes up through the rods, around the cyclone, back up the rods, into the hose, down into the machine. And then if you look inside the cleaner itself, it's got this tiny little dust box. I think you can, I don't know how you do it. As you, I haven't really looked at it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, this tiny little dust box here. It's, it's like a camera. Smile! Uh, with the filter on the back. So this is obviously what captures the fine dust and then the large dirt gets caught in the cyclone unit that's on the rods, which is really cool. And it even comes with a little toothbrush. Look, it's got its, <laughs> its own little toothbrush that you clean the filter with. I mean, it's a horrible, filthy, nasty job. And it's you know, it's not, not the nicest smelling machine in the world, but the little toothbrush just like docks in the top there of the dust box <laughs> it's so cool and it's um a uh, remote control as well you control everything from the handle and I, I was like oh my god this is so awesome and you just lock that little box back inside and then close the vid and yeah that's it uh and then we've got like various filters around everything and again it's not bad condition to be honest th th this will clean up really nicely i thought it's just a really interesting little cleaner uh, unfortunately, the all the lettering's wearing off. I can see the it's got three LEDs here on the body, and the top one says check filter, and then the middle one says it looks like mid pig. Uh, well, I'm not sure why it was saying mid pig, uh, and then the the last one is on. So obviously that's to tell you if it's plugged in and turned on. And it's got the little kit. Little cable rewind button there, and these massive wheels on it. And I thought oh, it's just so cool. I love it. I love it. Uh, again, if you guys know um, the year or, or the years that this particular machine was on sale, let me know because, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I, I sort of remember seeing these in catalogues and stores, I think in approximately 2005, something like that, maybe earlier. Um, but yeah, it's just so cool. I love it. It's just one that I have to have. Um, yeah, so that one will be restored. We'll clean it up, give it a service. And uh, yeah, this this one will stay in the um, collection. So uh, yeah, on to the next one. Now we start to get really interesting and the ones that are really pushing my buttons. Here we have a Hoover Turbo Power 2. And you're probably thinking, oh, it's just a Turbo Power 2, it's a Turbo. I've got loads of those. But this one is incredibly special, incredibly special. And the reason it's incredibly special is because of this. As you can see, it's got the piston style bag full um, indicator here. They usually had an, a third LED at the top um, to show you when the bag was full, uh, or in this case, the PEMA bag was full. So this, this particular cleaner is the absolute top of the range of the original Turbo, uh, Turbo Power 2 machines. And it is a miracle 
an absolute miracle that this bag door is still in one piece. The reason these cleaners are so rare is because this moulding here, where they took the little chunk of plastic out to show you the uh, slider for the bag full system, it made the moulding of the bag door incredibly weak. Now, you'll notice on the later machines, the moulding of the bag door looks very, very similar to this, but obviously it doesn't have this uh, piston mechanism in it, and no hole in the front. But these cleaners were so strong, uh, they had so much suction power, that if you block the hose, or the perma bag was blocked, which, let's face it, always happened, the force of the suction would pull the plastic of the bag door in, and they would crack. They'd crack from top to bottom, just a massive split right down there. Um, so to see one of these is unbelievable. It is unbelievable. Um, another one that Luke picked up for me, again, I think it was from Facebook Marketplace, and I saw that bag full on it. I thought, oh my God, I've got to have that. Um, and my theory about it was correct, because if we look at the serial number, be very, very careful with this, because this, 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 this just wants to break, um, and that perma bag does not help. Oh, let's get, try and get it on correct. There we go. Um, if we look at the serial number, we actually see that uh, this machine was manufactured in July of 1992, and that is, that's the very first, that's like, so incredibly early in the Turbo 2 run. Uh, what what a find. This is this really is quite something. Um, I do need to do some work to it. It needs a new uh, tool caddy here because the lower handle is broken off. That happens so frequently to these. It's, they're, they're really heavy, as I previously told you about. The Turbo 2 is quite a he hefty machine. So all the weight is on this carrying handle here when people are carrying them around. And it's amazing to think that this machine is almost 30 years old now. Turbo Power 2, 30 years old. It's mental. I still think of these as being new. They're like, they're like the new Hoovers. This is crazy. Um, Luke did say that uh, it had been stored outside and they just put a, a bin bag over it. So it had been out in the rain and the wind and the snow and the hail and God knows what. So. It's like covered with outdoor dirt. Um, and he didn't turn it on. Luke didn't turn it on, which is very, 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 very sensible because it was most likely wet. Um, so this one will need to be completely stripped down and completely checked out. Hopefully the electronics are okay on it. Um, but yeah, what a find. What, just what an unbelievable find. If you think this is a good find, you wait till you see... The, the next two cleaners. Machine number seven. Oh my good lord. <laughs> wow. I mean, it, pff, it speaks for itself, doesn't it? Uh, this, <laughs> this, is just, this is just so stupid. Um, my friend Jeff and I went to visit Jeff's wholesaler, who Jeff buys his white goods from. Um, and I really needed the loo. So I said, oh, can I, can I use the toilet? And Jeff said, yeah, it's just... Just around there, you walk around this wall of machines, around the back, find the loo. I walk down, I turn left, and there's these three cleaners there. There's this Tipper Master soft bag, the um, yellow Pure Power, and machine number eight. So machine number eight is incredibly special. If this isn't the most unbelievable find of, of my holiday, then number eight is going to be something else. Uh, but yeah, here we have a Turbo Master soft bag. I already have one of these. You probably saw it in my um, Hoover Room video. I don't, have I ever done a video on it? Probably. Um, but I mean, this is this just just this on its own is is an amazing find. Now I do, as I say, I do have one of these, but unfortunately, my one, it's had a replacement trunnion. So this is this is the trunnion here where it connects the, the back body to the chassis. And this was quite a weak point on these because there's an awful lot of weight on the front here. Um, and these tended to snap and they snap off at the point where they meet the 
uh, chassis. Also here as well, it's not particularly strong uh, plastic moulding. So this is the original one here. This It's all light blue. My one's black. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to keep the, I might keep the handle, I, I don't know about the bag as well. It depends. I'll make a really good one out of the two. And then this one will either be sold or, you know, it probably won't be sold actually. I've got a, I've got a plan for it. Yeah, I've got a plan for it, but I'm going to say no more than that. I'm going to, shh. Now, unfortunately, it is quite faded, because the blue, and you may not be able to see it on the camera, uh, it has gone quite dark. The, um, the, the hood has gone quite dark. The, the mechanism for the tools, the tool con converter, is still like the nice blue that it, it should be. But the hood itself has gone a bit green. It's like a bluey green. So um, I will try and retrobrite this, because it's not one that I'm planning to keep. Um, and it was free as well. <laughs> it was free. I got it for nothing. Turn them out to soft bag for nothing. Just unbelievable. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, the chap did say, Ian did say that um, it's not sounding the best. So I suspect it will need quite a bit of work doing to it. But that's fine. I mean, I've done hundreds of those motors in the past. I'm just to tell you what the, what the date is of it. Um, so it's March of 88. So it's the second year of um, Turbo Master production. And yeah, it's just an unbelievable find. T Turbo Master soft bag f for free. Awesome. And now we come on to the final machine. Now, if you thought the Turbo Master soft bag was rare, welcome to the Hot Point Super. <laughs> this, this is unbelievable. To find one of these, for free, it's just mind blowing. So it was um, the uh, yellow Pure Power Turbo Master Soft Bag and the Hot Point Super that I found at uh, Ian's Ian's place. It's just I, I couldn't believe it. I stopped dead in my tracks. I mean, it's a Hot Point Super for God's sake. You, <laughs> I'm almost speechless now, two weeks after the event. Um, so this is a model 3650 uh, from 1985. It's got various 1985 date stamps on it. Um, I don't know if it works because unfortunately some idiot at some point in its life has removed the flex winder mechanism from under this cover. So there's a I've got the button here to uh, retract the flex. I think this is the actual flex from the machine. Um, yes, it is with the hot point plug on it. So what they've done is they basically just wired the cable straight into the cleaner here. And yeah, the, the rewind mechanism is gone. It's all gone from inside there, which is such a shame. It is an unbelievable shame. However, having said that, I don't think it would be too difficult to get a cable rewind mechanism from something else fitted into this top section here. There's quite a reasonable amount of room in there. Um, the rewind unit itself doesn't have to be too big, probably four inches. I would say if, if, if I can find one that's about four inches across, I can probably get one to fit in there. Um, it might be a bit tricky, but you know, it's a project, isn't it? It'll make an interesting video. Um, apparently it does work, so that's good. I, I, as I say, I haven't turned it on, I haven't tried it. But apart from that, it is complete. We've got the brush roll and the base plate and everything. The brush roll's not looking too bad, actually. It looks quite nice. Certainly a lot of uh, brushes left on it. Um, but yeah, I mean, what? <laughs> God, I just couldn't, I couldn't believe it. Unfortunately, the, the, the bag door is split here. If I take it off, um, I'm sure, sure you guys want to see inside. Uh, but yeah, just at this, this point here where the spring is, the um, the plastic's broken, which is a shame. But it's, uh, again, not hard to fix. I'm pretty sure we can do that. And you won't see it either. You, you won't see this crack when it's fixed. But yeah, I mean, God, I haven't seen one of these for a long, long time.
long, long time. This is really is an incredible find. Um, yeah, so you see what I'm what I mean now from going from meh to ah, because this really is a machine. Um, yeah, really, really happy to have this, and it will be restored. Uh, so yeah, th there will be videos on this. We'll definitely take it apart. We'll see what we can do with the flex winder. Uh, we'll check out the motor. Hopefully the fan's okay. Yeah, and there we go. That's it really. Uh, <laughs> eight machines in one video. I do spoil you. I spoil you so. Uh, yeah, so there we go. Um, let me know what you think. Um, yeah, is it a good haul? I, th I, I think it's a good haul. So yeah comment your comments in the comment section uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah thanks ever so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video and um, yeah do the usual comment subscribe and like and I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, I've got another machine oh I don't know if I should no I'm gonna save that for a separate video yeah yeah just to tease you the, that's a teaser there's something in actually <laughs> actually the other machine is even more amazing than, than, than this. So, yeah. Okay. Shh. No, no more. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.